Hi everybody, welcome to a new PyTorch tutorial. In this tutorial we will talk about transfer learning and how it can be applied in PyTorch. Transfer learning is a machine learning method where a model developed for a first task is then reused as the starting point for a model on a second task. For example, we can train a model to classify birds and cats and then use the same model, modify it only a little bit in the last layer and then use the new model to classify bees and dogs. So it's a popular approach in deep learning that allows rapid generation of new models. And this is super important because training of a completely new model can be very time consuming. It can take multiple days or even weeks. So if you use a pre-trained model, then we typically exchange only the last layer and then do not need to train the whole model again. However, transfer learning can achieve pretty good performance results and that's why it's so popular nowadays. So let's have a look at this picture. Here we have a typical CNN architecture that I already showed you in the last tutorial. And this, let's say this has been already trained on a lot of data and we have the optimized weights. And now we only want to take the last fully connected layer. So this one here and then modify it and train the last layer on our new data. So then we have a new model that has been trained and tweaked in the last layer. And yeah, this is the concept of transfer learning. And now let's have a look at a concrete example in PyTorch. So in this example, we want, we are using the pre-trained ResNet 18 CNN. This is a network that is trained on more than a million images from the ImageNet database. And this network is 18 layers deep and can classify images into 1000 object categories. And now in our example, we have only two classes. So we only want to detect bees and ants. And yeah, so let's start. So in this session, I already, I also want to show you two other new things. So first the data sets image folder, how we can use this and how we use a scheduler to change the learning rate. And then of course, how transfer learning is used. So I already imported the things that we need. And now we set up the data and the last time we used the built-in data sets from the um, Torch Vision data sets and now here we use the data sets dot image folder because we uh, saved our data in a folder and this has to have the structure like this so we have the folder here and then we have a training and a validation folder so train and val and in each one we have folders for each class so here we have ants and ants and bees and also in the validation folder we have ants and bees and now in each folder we have the images here so for example here we have some ants and also let's have a look at some bees. So here we have a bee. And yeah, so you must um, structure your folder like this. And then you can call the datasets.image folder and give it the path. And we also give it some transforms here. And then we get the classes the class names by calling image sets image data sets dot classes and um, yeah then here I defined the training model where I did the loop um, and did the training and the evaluation I will not go into detail here um, you should already know this from the last tutorials how a typical training and evaluation loop looks like uh, you can also check the whole code on GitHub. So I will provide the link in the description. So have a look at this yourself. And now let's use transfer learning. So first of all, we want to import the pre-trained model. So let's set up this model. So we can do this by saying model. So model 
equals, and this is available in the um, torchvision.models module. So I imported torchvision models already, and then I can call models.resnet16, or uh, sorry, resnet18 here. And then I can say pre-trained equals true. So this is already the optimized weights that are trained on the image net data. And now what we want to do is we want to exchange the last uh, fully connected layer. So first of all, let's get the number of input features from the last layer. So let's say num features equals model and we can get this by calling dot fc fully connected and then the input features so this is the number of input features for the last layer that we need and then let's create a new layer and assign it to the last layer so let's say model dot fc equals and now we give it a new fully connected layer nn dot linear and this gets the number of input features that we have and then as new output features number of outputs we have two because we have two classes now and now we send our model to the device if we have gpu support so we created our device in the beginning as always. So this is CUDA or simply CPU. And now that we have our new model, we can again, as always, define our loss and optimizer. So we say criterion equals nn dot cross entropy loss and then let's say the optimizer equals, um, this is from the optimization module, optim.sgd, stochastic gradient descent, which has to optimize the model parameters. And we have to specify the learning rate equals, let's say 0 0.001. And now as a new thing, let's use a scheduler. This will update the uh, learning rate. So for this, we can say, we can create this by saying, let's call this step LR scheduler equals, and the LR scheduler is available also in the torch optimization module. So we already imported this and then we can say lr scheduler dot step lr and then here we have to give it the optimizer so here we say optimizer and then we say step size step size equals seven and then we say gamma equals uh, let's say 0.1. This means that every seven epochs, our learning rate is multiplied by this value. So every seven epochs, our learning rate um, has only 10, is now only updated to 10%. So yeah, this is how we use a scheduler. And then typically what we want to do is in our loop, in our loop over the epoch. So for epoch in range, let's say 100. And then typically here we use the training where we also do um, the, the optimizer.step, optimizer.step then we want to evaluate it, evaluate it. And then we also have to call scheduler step, scheduler step. So this is how we use a scheduler. Please have a look at the whole loop here yourself. So yeah, now we set up the scheduler and let's uh, call the training 
function. So here we say model equals and then train model. So this is the function that I created. And then I have to pass the model, the criterion, the optimizer, the scheduler, and also the number of epochs. So num epochs, let's say 20. And yeah, so this is how we use how we can use transfer learning. So in this case, we use a technique that is called fine tuning. Because here we um, train the whole model again, but only a little bit. So we fine tune all the weights based on the new data and with the new last layer. So this is one option. And the second one is um, for this, I copy and paste the same thing. And um, let's see where does it start. So here, and then as a second option, what we can do is we can freeze all the all the layers in the beginning and only train the very last layer. So for this, um, we have to loop over all the parameters here after we got our model. So we say for param in model dot parameters. And then we can um, set the require scrat attribute to false. So we can say param dot require scrat and then say re sorry dot require scrat require scrat equals false. Now we have it and this will freeze all the uh, layers in the beginning and now we set up the new last layer we create a new layer here and by default this has requires grad equals true and then again we set up the loss and optimizer and the scheduler in this case and then we do the training function again and so yeah so this is even more faster and let's run this and then have a look at both the evaluations and I also print out the time that it took. So yeah, let's save this and let's run this by saying python transfer dot pi. And this might or oh, first it will download all the images. And this might take a couple of seconds because I don't have uh, GPU support here on my MacBook. So I will skip this and then I will see you in a second. All right, so now I'm back. So this took super long on my computer. So I reset the number of epochs to just two in this example. So let's have a look at the results. So after only two epochs, um, so this is the first um, training where we did the fine tuning of the whole uh, model. So this took three and a half minutes and the best accuracy now is 0.92. So 92%. And then this is the second uh, training where we um, only trained the last layer. So this took only one and a half minutes approximately. And the accuracy is also um, is already over 80%. So of course, it's not as good as in when we train the whole training, but still pretty good for only two epochs. And now let's imagine if we set the number of epochs even higher. So yeah, this is why transfer learning is so powerful because we have a pre trained um, model and then we only fine tune it a little bit and do a completely new task and then achieve pretty good results too. So yeah, so now I hope you understood how transfer learning can be applied in PyTorch. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.